Hello, this is episode 4 in the drag bone series. Today we'll be looking at bone hierarchy and a few constraints within that. As you can all see on screen, we are continuing using the little bug we put together in the previous episode where we learned how to import art assets in various ways. In this episode, we'll create a bone hierarchy for this little bug. So, let's begin. Looking at it, we can see we're going to need a bone for the body, one for the head, and one for each of the arms, or the legs, however you want to call them. I've also added um, some extra art assets. I put in the eyelids, which were missing in the previous episode. So I'm going to turn them off for now so we can see the little eyes. There we go. So we go to create bone or shortcut E and we're going to need to, I'm also going to turn off the tummy. The reason is because I want to see, when I add the bones to the arms, I want to know exactly where the pivot point is for their rotation. So let's go back to this. And one thing I want to first cover is this here in preferences. When we worked on the first episode working on the mech arm, we had bone auto bind on. Let me show you what this does and why I've turned it off now. In default mode, Dragon Bones, if you first run it on your own computers and you don't know about this, this is what's going to happen. You create a bone, let me, let's me let say I create one for leg, and right away, Dragon Bones assigns whichever image, you know, sort of, if the bone belongs in the whole, in the size, in the vicinity of one of the bones, I mean, in because you know each of these images are imported, it's really big, it sort of auto binds one of them to it. And it but it, what it did, it took the body image and put it on the leg. And I don't really want that. So I'm going to undo this, go to File, Preferences, and turn it off. And I personally believe 99% of the time, most animators or people who set up characters of 2D do want this off. Let's go back. Now, go to, have I turned it off? File, let me make sure. Yes, it's off. Now, Create Bone. And let's go a bit closer in. We know the body is going to rotate, rotate somewhere here. So I start from the belly button, let's say, and go work my way up to suppose where the neck is. And while the bone is selected, we create the second one, which is for the head. While creating the second bone while the first was selected, it automatically creates a hierarchy. We remember that from um, lesson num episode number one. I right clicked anywhere on screen to deselect, to, no, to not do anything. And I did the mistake of creating a bone into. Right, cool. Let's create another one for the leg down here. Now I created a new bone for the bottom, the third leg on the left side. And I right click to deselect. As you can see, it is not um, connected to the body, something we do want it to. It's easy. I can either select mode, select the bone and right click and say, set parent and click on the bone I want to. You can see it already selected. Or I can, let me undo this, I can go here in the scene hierarchy and just drag and drop it on top. Cool. Let's go back to and create bone mode. I'm going to select the body and make the second one for the second leg on the left. Right click to deselect. Select the main body again, the bone, and create the top leg for the first leg on the left side. Cool. Now, if I walk away and come back to my computer, all I see is bone, bone, bone. It's not nice. I need to start naming things properly. So which one is this? Top one. Let's start naming things so we know what goes where. Bone. Yep, this one's going to be B for bone and then the name of what it belongs to. Which one's this on the bottom? Mm, that's the top one. Cool. B, um, I'm going to use L for left leg. And one, already you can see I'm starting to create also a naming convention so I know what's going on. Which one is this one? This is the second one. B for bone, L for left, leg, and two. And the one that's left should be B, L, leg, one. Exists. Did I put him the wrong way around? Let me see, which one is this one? That's the top one, that's the second one, and that is, oh, that's supposed to be the third one, right. That's pretty cool. So we've already created a little hierarchy and we can go and check what we want. 
Let's say, for example, I had created another bone by mistake while I had this selected one up here, and I don't want it. One way, you can um, just select it and delete it, or when you move something straight onto the root, it deselects it, de de it deattaches de it from wherever it was, and it brings it back to in its initial state. You know, everything at the end of the day is connected to the root, which I've hidden. You know, it's that little thing in the middle that appears there, that thing. I usually hide it and turn off selectability because it, you know, it makes a mess of things. So we've got this little bone, this extra one I did here now. I deselected it, and I'm just going to create, press delete, get rid of it. Now, I'm going to turn the eyelids off, I said, because I need to make sure I create a controller for the eyes to move around. I also want to make a controller for each of the arms to move them, but then I want to make an overall controller to move all three arms at once. Let's see what, what I'm talking about. I'm going to select the bone for the head, the top one, and I'm going to create a new one attached to that, just up here. There you go. There's this little bone up here on its own, which if I move or rotate the head, it goes with it. This bone up here, I'm going to use as a controller for the eyes. How's that going to work? Well, I'm going to name it first of all, you know, eyes, whatever. And I'm going to get the image of the eyes somewhere here, here it is, and move it onto that. Now, how does this work? The eyes are attached to that. So wherever that goes and however it orientates, it moves, it, it, uh, they go with it. Let's see, if I move this around, I control the eyes. And all I have to be care about, care, you know, look out for is not to move beyond the eye sockets. So I can start animating them left and right. Ooh. But if I move the head or rotate it, because this is bound to, is a child of the head, it would go with it. All I need to do now is to make sure that the head also, head, is attached to the head. Now, let's see how this works. There you go. I can rotate the head around and separately move the eyes. Do that and then go back to the head. There we go. We have a little hierarchy with bones where one bone is the part which moves things all together and orientates them and the other one works as a controller which is attached, which follows the basic orientation and movement of its parent, which is the head. And all these together do the same thing with the body. That's what we call a hierarchy. You can see the arms are moving. So now I need to move, attach the three arms on the left to the three bones on the left. That's where the naming convention comes in handy. You can see I've got leg one, two, three. I've got, I had named them arms. I could have named it legs, but all I have to look at, left arm one should go to left one. Left arm three goes to three. Left arm two goes to two. It should work perfectly if I had named them correctly. There we go. And to make sure each one's correct, let's see. There you go. One, yes, two, uh-huh, and three. Perfect. They're, they're attached nicely. Now, I could have done a mistake. Let's say I had created one, um, I'm going to select this, one bone on this side. But for some reason, I had attached the right arm on the top to that new bone. Let's see what happens. Am I selecting it properly? Yes. No, we don't want that. How do I detach the image from that bone? I'm just going to select the image and move it onto root. And now it's not it's not part of it anymore. That's how simple it is. I don't want this little fella. I'm going to turn it off. Now, we need to create, I'm going to go to select mode and select each one of these bones and go to IK constraints. So one for you. Second one, one for you, and for the third one, one for you. Remember how these work? We just move these around and the bone tries, it aims at it. That's why they look like little targets. It tries to follow it, I'm gonna aim at you. So we had three different controllers for each one of the legs on the left. But sometimes we wanna move all three at once. Let's create a super controller for all three. I'm gonna select everything, go to create bone, and create one big bone over here. That sounded naughty, whatever. Now, this isn't attached to anything, here it is. I'm gonna select the three controllers 
and move them onto that new, newly created bone over there. So if I move this now, look what it does. It moves all three at once, but if I want to, I can move down to hierarchy and then separately animate this one. So I can make, animate each one separately, or all three at once like this. And all I need to do, I can either leave, leave this little control, this, the main ones on their own, so they use, they're attached to the root, which means they use global coordinates, what the scene has, or I can select this and say, set parent as the body. So now it uses local coordinates of whatever this bone is. Meanwhile, you can see I still am in selectable mode for the images, and that's pretty annoying. I can turn it off down here so I don't select the images. Now, if we select the bone in the middle, the body, everything goes with it. So they all go. And this is the part where I should actually select the body image and move it onto the bone and turn the tummy on and move that onto the bone where it's body. Now, let's do that again one more time. There we go. It's nicely done. I've got that. I've got um, this, 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 this. And I can also make a controller for this one here and a controller for this fella here. So now I've got controllers for the head, for the body, woo, for each arm, let's see, and an overall. And if I want to, I can actually select this bone here and also change its color to, let's say, orange. So it confirm it looks like a controller it has the same color so what have we made so far we've created a hierarchy for this little bug for its body and the left side also for the eyes I can also attach the eyes yep look the eyes um, we've got the body done the head the arms all I need to do I can t let me turn on the eyelids that one there you can see how cluttered it's starting it's becoming and this is why we need to properly um, um, name things properly so I'm going to turn that on and there should be another eyelid somewhere which I cannot see here it is there we go if I move the head no, they don't move with it so I'm going to select the eyelids and drag it onto the head so now that goes with it yeah but how do we animate the eyelids to open and close that's pretty simple if we go to animation i'm not going to animate it i'm going to leave this to up leave this up to you guys let's just select um the, the left one when you select the image i have to go back to selectable see i've got i can't select images and i can't animate it i have to turn that on again now i'm going to select the eyelid left eye closed and say up to the frame 10 here we go. Look at this thing over here. It says display. I want it to be on. Then I'm going to go to the next frame, open it up and say, I don't want it to be there. Give it a keyframe. And then on 22, I want it to come back. Let's play that loop. All right. So now we're animating how to turn things on and off. There's also another way. If some people saw that, let me do it with the other eye. There's this thing called alpha. Let me see how that one works. So, alpha, let me select the eye, alpha, 100%, alpha, zero. Or, there you go. And you can do that. And then back to 100. So there's different ways of turning things off and on. I'm not going to continue anymore. That's all I wanted to show. What I'm going to do, I'm going to leave a link in the description where you can download these assets. You can set up the little bug however you want to and try to also do the other side if you feel like completing it. And then it's up to you to do whatever little animations you want. You can make it waving, dancing, swimming, flying, whatever. But this is just a little video I want to show how hierarchies work and what they can do. They can, they're for creating skeleton systems, but also controllers like this. I hope you all enjoyed this video. And um, see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.